students to do some social learning. So I want to start a little conversation. Um, Tony, what do you think social learning is? What, think social learning what is? do you think social learning is? Um, or what it should be? Collaboration between uh, students. Okay, collaboration between students. So usually uh, in a typical classroom, where does the collaboration begin and end? Where does the collaboration take place? Depending on which <coughs> Sorry? It depends on which component you're covering. Okay. I mean like a physical place though. Groups. In groups. Okay, so they collaborate maybe in two to three groups. Um, and then that's the beginning of the collaboration, <coughs> the sharing. Where can it end though in a class, in a typical class? The extent of collaborating, the extent of sharing. In the past, within the group. Well, how do you, sorry? In the past, it would end just with the group. With the group, yeah. okay. So where does it end now? That's what we hope. Usually, I think in a, in a typical class, right, you know, it's within the class, within the groups, and that's where it kind of stops, tweet teacher, student to student. Um, so social learning, definitely we want to collaborate. So why are we using Lava Spring? Tony said Lava Spring. Does anyone in here use Lava Spring? Raise your hand. Only Tony does. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Does anyone know what Lava Spring is or have heard of it in the past? <coughs> A couple. couple okay. So let me ask you this. Does anyone in here um, use social networking sites? Okay, I would expect most of you. What's the most, I guess, typical uh, or popular social networking site right now? Facebook. Facebook, okay. So now I want you to think about Facebook. Why do we use Facebook? Why do we like Facebook or Instagram or these kind of the SNS? What makes you want to go there? I want to share. Okay, you want to share? Pictures. Pictures. Why else do we want to go to Facebook? Connecting with people, right? Especially if you're a foreign teacher in Korea, why go to Facebook? Find what's happening with your friends and your family. Exactly. Keep in touch with your with your network, right? Um, and that keyword, friends and family, rather than strangers, right? So, I think within the social network, for it to be successful, you need to have that sort of connection. Being chung um, I think we're a little bit more. We have something more than just a boutique, boutique academy, boutique hardware. And what would that be? What's the main difference? Uh, interaction. Interaction, okay, with who? Uh, students. Right. With the right, okay, so a student with a tablet. Biggest difference between boutique and Tonda uh, would maybe be the number of students that we have, right? So we have, I think we have, what, about just over 26? thousand right now students so that in itself is its own network they um, some students might know each other some students might remember teachers from the past so we've took, taken that concept of why maybe Facebook maybe Instagram those kind of um, SNS sites why they're popular and we're trying to use it as a learning resource to like Tony said collaborate um, share ideas another reason maybe is uh, Korea is still kind of a homogenous society, right? They all kind of live and think in the same way. So when students were trying to make them think critically, we want them to kind of expand outside of that box. So we've created a website called Love is Green, and in here we've put in um, not only work from <coughs> our community of Changdam students, but also just inspirational works and articles um, from different parts of the world, different types of people in hopes to expand their thinking and expose them to, um, I guess, new ways of doing things. So why am I talking about this? For Seed Fun, uh, since we want them to do critical thinking projects and we don't want it to be the same, we really want you guys to maybe log on to Loud Spring, check out what the students might like. So a very key one would be PBL, this middle section here. <coughs> Anna, do you maybe know what PBL stands for? 
Not sure. Tony knows? Okay. Um, peanut, butter, <laughs> lettuce. Uh, project based learning. Project based learning, yeah. So, can you explain what project based learning is? Has anyone taught C2? Okay, what is C2? You do a They just do a project for the whole class. So we're hoping uh, by designing and thinking of the different perspectives, um, they learn that way. So that's kind of PBL here. So we're trying to make them think in a different way. Rather than just lecturing, we're wanting the students to, to develop their own um, skills and logic, right? So for PBL, what we put in there is student projects, yes, but also just cool videos of, of different ways of, of presenting things. Um, so if you check it out, um, you know, we have some videos of kids using Legos and, and putting that together in a presentation in hopes that when you show it to students, they enjoy it and they want to kind of replicate it, kind of copy it to make it their own and then expand their creativity, okay? So perhaps when you're running the CTP, just log on and show them a couple of videos, different ways to construct a CTP and then move on to the project. Um, the other thing we really want to emphasize is portfolio. So uh, another great aspect, I guess, of social learning is they can really keep a history of um, their learning and then share and show off. <laughs> so on here, I just made an example. You can make your own little avatar character. So not only do they personalize and, and they feel like, okay, I belong to this community and I can make my own identity, they can then post up all the projects. So that's where, in any class, but especially in CFUN, let's get them started. Let's, um, get them wanting to share their creativity by maybe taking a picture of whatever they've made. Or um, if they want, they can even you know film a part of their uh, project. So if they were doing like the puppet show or whatever, they can film a little bit of that, upload it here. They don't have to show their faces, right? Um, and then it just it just saves on there and anybody in the Chungda community in our social network can view it, comment it, like it. And so we're hoping that the comments and the, and the likes will encourage the students to keep doing that and then also um, learn from other people's projects on here. Richard, you look confused. Is that a new feature? Yeah, yeah. So this is was launched, I guess, like maybe one or two weeks ago. Oh, so students can upload projects. Yeah. Projects, videos. Um, you can even upload videos. So if you want to prep even, you can link like a YouTube video that you really like, put it on your portfolio, log in and just show it from here if you want to. Um, or pictures. So, Or even just a blog post if they just want to talk about something. They just post it up there. Is this just for C-Fun or? No, any, any module. Any module. Yeah. So, really neat tool. Um, there are other uh, aspects of Lattice Brain, but um, for C-Fun levels, I'm not quite sure if uh, they're quite ready. So, for example, extensive learning right now, it has articles and um, that additional in-depth information for students who are maybe in C2 that do the research um, or in maybe V1 to let them do book reviews and that sort of thing. But until we get more stuff for C fun, extensive learning might be a little bit harder for them because the vocab is not, you know, it's not summarized and it's not um, dumbed down a little bit. Um, another cool part would be the my story. So this one here, we're seeing a bunch of teacher faces. So there, that's where uh, we have a lot of instructors that just kind of talk about their experience and just something interesting. So like instruments that they play or their goals in their life. And that can, you can maybe even turn that for CFUN into an activity. So if there's a CTP that really just you don't think your students will like, go on Loud Screen and utilize that. Maybe, um, maybe you would pick, so for instance, Leah was talking about music, musical instruments that she would play. So if perhaps that topic lines with the story that you're reading or is similar to the CTP that's available, maybe just go on here and ask them to, you know, do a posting there and make a presentation about um, and then put it on their portfolio. So we really want to encourage going to this site. Okay. Um, now, supplementary materials. Uh, a lot of this stuff we would have assigned for homework and then done like a homework check 
in the beginning of class at the 2.0 um, times. But with 3.0, we've still left it in the smart textbook, but more as just supplement. So if you've got if you have a class that's you know high achievers or they do have those more of the fundamental skills than you might have expected, then go ahead and utilize these pages. But they are not mandatory at all. So um, if you don't have the time, that's okay. Also, if you assign it for homework, uh, that's that's perfectly fine, and that can you know vary depending on your branch or location that you're at. If they want to do assigned homework, however, since we're not we're not so worried about taking homework scores or scoring their comprehension grades. It's not necessary to actually check it, but of course if the student comes back the next day, oh teacher, did I do this right? You know, you want to get feedback. But since it's in the smart textbook, it's gonna you're gonna have to open the book and the lesson that the student had it and close your lesson, which is all connected to the student. So it might not be the best thing to do a homework check in class. Okay. Um, but anyways, the components in EC1, that would be supplemental, would be the your own story. So this usually comes right after story mapping. So they would memorize the sentences and at the bottom they would make their own story for homework. Um, if you have time in class, do it in class. If you want to assign it, definitely assign it. So that's supplemental. Also the chunk book. So like I said, that was a big part of homework check in 2.0, but now with 3.0, where do they do their homework? Online. Online, yeah. It's called iLearning. Um, do you guys know what iLearning stands for? Guesses? <laughs> what? I can't read your lips. <laughs> internet? Internet learning. Good guess. Yes, it's definitely using internet. Independent learning. So they're learning by themselves. Um, we put the chunks into their iLearning. So in the little segment guide that I gave to you, it's like a, you can see like a Monopoly map style thing there. Okay, so when they finish class, so they've taken the bus, they came to, to Chung Down, they finish class, they'll go home or go wherever they want. Um, they start with collocation vocab and productive chunks, which is basically topic and chunks, word to chunks book. <laughs> So here, instead of um, doing, you know, just writing the words over and over and over again, it's going to be more activity-based, kind of testing their memory, and um, it's a little bit more fun on the tab. So as soon as they finish their collocation vocab and their production chunk, they can move on to their speaking and writing homework. On the back, uh, I've kind of outlined here exactly what they would be doing and when, which weeks they'll be doing. Uh, which writing project, so you can have a look here, but um, the nice thing is since it's all iLearning, it's all on the tab, you don't have to take away time from your class or um, to check this homework. You can view if they've been completing it, but you don't actually have to go in and you know spend the extra 10-15 minutes to check each book. Actually, it would take much longer if you did it in the 3.0 books because you'd have to get them to sign out, go back into their old book, and check each page. So it's it's definitely still offered, it's just in a different format. Okay, um, and in the um, book, every at the end of every lesson, in the grammar and uh, ready and grammar, there's a page called Let's Practice. That's like the very last two pages. Again, that's where we would have assigned homework, but now if you have the extra time, do it. If you don't, it's just supplemental, just extra practice. For easy two and three, same thing. So the chunks, own story, um, let's practice. The only addition here would be the vocab comprehension. Um, and that actually, I would, if you have the time, go over that in class. It's really good for them to understand the different ways and contexts to use a vocab word. So that actually is... I think a really good one to go over in class, but not mandatory. Okay, so I just want to go over now the, the books with you. So when you go on your bookshelf, um, right now if you want to take a look at these books, you can sign in with the ID CDI3 underscore INS21, password CDI30666. So when you log in, you can download these books. Um, they'll be available in the semi-bookshelf because they are created 
uh, within house. So we do make these um, books here. Um, and when you open it up, you'll notice that um, the books are labeled um, with every, what do you call it, uh, with every day that you teach the class. So in EC, there's a total of six books. And in each book, there's um, a total of four days worth of class. But they title them lessons in the book. So this, don't get confused with the, with the terminology, so I'll explain. For example, book one is called Island for Sale. So one of the storybooks, this one, will go with that. So that will last you for four classes, which would be two weeks. Day one, day two, day one, day two. Okay. So if I open up the, the book one, class one, Island for Sale, they'll have within the book a title called Lesson. So there's three lessons, lessons per class. And what that means is basically your hours, hour one, hour two, hour three. So that's how you can think of it. Um, so when you start, we have that picture talk right here. Um, they can fill in some answers, but don't worry too much of the students actually writing here. It's more discussion. So uh, try to make sure you're focusing a little bit more on them participating in class. We've started by putting some media cards already up there for you, but we are only providing media cards for the first three weeks. So that would be um, day one, day two of the first three weeks. Only because we want to show you the different ways to use media cards for this kind of level. Um, and since EC, there's already so much supplementary material. There's a lot of content that you might not be able to get through. I wouldn't necessarily put too many videos in there. You're going to run out of time. So um, I think for EC, since we're trying to build their fundamental skills, use those activity cards, drawing cards, multiple choice cards, um, short answer cards. So that'll kind of wake them up and get them active. So we put a few different ones in there. You don't have to use them, but we do recommend that you at least look through them and see what type of cards they are, and then you can personalize your own cards if you want. Okay? And you can see that in the handout, we have provided what's called a media card guide. So um, for CFUN, we're going to be providing quite a few different types of materials for um, different types of facilitators. So some facilitators, like you guys, have already taught EC. You may not need the teacher guide that I was showing you that um, shows you like how to ask questions and the grammar points. You might already know that, so you don't need that. But maybe you want to be able to know what media cards that we provided to help you gauge um, if you want to use them or if you want to create your own. So in here, it's just a screenshot of the page that has the media card, the media card that's there, and our explanation for why we added it. So um, how it can help students you know, comprehend whatever it is is on that page. So um, that will be available again the first three weeks. And then after that, it's up to the facilitators to uh, make these kind of prep materials. Okay, the other guide that I had given to you was the program guide. So in here is the overall methodology that I was talking about today and the different steps. But they also have the materials. So on here, um, we've kept one aspect very much the same as 2.0 is the two different tracks of EC. Okay, so um, for spring and fall, that would be A track. Winter and summer would be B track. So right now we're going to be starting with the A track. So this will only apply to EC levels one, two, and three. Okay, there is a fourth level, but that's going to be launched in summer and winter, and it will not be divided by tracks. It will just be uh, EC four, C fun. And it's actually a combination of memory, mega, and giga material. Okay, because uh, with, from feedback, we've heard that a lot of EC4 content was much harder than the memory and the giga, and some of those storybooks were more popular. So we decided to use that, and it also lined up better with you know the C1 EC level. So one to three will have two tracks again, like I said, and they have different storybooks that come with it. When the students get the storybook, they also receive a CD. So that's when they go home and they can listen to the CD as they're looking through the storybook to help them um, 
read and, and improve their listening skills. Teacher does not get a CD though. They will not have to use the CD player or a computer. The audios will all be built into the top. So if I skip ahead here, you can see a little audio button here. And that's where you would play the audio for your listening track. Now, when you do the listening section, there is one section here, then a, a middle section there, and then the bottom section. This is what usually the listening comprehension test was in 2.0, but again, we're not, we're not making it a test. So these different sections, um, it's all going to be on one audio at the top right here. So highly, highly, highly recommend it. When you do this, and perhaps in the first week, first two classes, you decide you're only going to focus on these two sections. Maybe you're not yet ready for this section because maybe your students are, uh, their skills are not up to par for that. That's okay, but just mark on the, on the um, audio which sections you'll do by using the bookmark function, right? So just timestamp where these sections are, where that section is, and where the third section is. Otherwise, you'll be fumbling through this whole audio and <laughs> it'll look really embarrassing. So make sure listening bookmark them, which um, sections you're going to do. So now I just wanted to talk about over here. Okay. In the third hour, like I said, um, they do. They start with speaking, and then they move on to grammar or writing in day one. But in day two, the grammar and writing. So these get ready, get set, goes. We don't do them. So they'll be there, but we're not going to do them because we move on to CTP. And the CTP, you'll just have to like pull it up, and the CTP will start right here. Um, so if I was teaching that class, I would just gray out those sections. So. To do that, you just long hold.